Welcome everyone to our newest or well, freshest uh, expert session here at Scalfree. Uh, it's called Inside Modern Data Teams. And this is um, yeah, pretty much replacing uh, an, uh, the Agile expert session, um, which was also led by Lawrence and me. Um, but I come back to this later. But first, we want to, uh, to do some introductions about ourselves. About ourselves um, and I'll going to start and then Lawrence will take over. And then we start with our topics for today. So yeah, my name is Lea Busche. I'm a BI consultant at Scalefree and I have over five years experience as a project manager and also uh, now, yeah, now two years experience as a BI consultant um, and specialized in solution architecture and data modeling with Data Boy 2.0. And yeah, my core competencies are Therefore, uh, data modeling, agile project management, and um, process management also, and solution architecture. And then I would hand over to Lorenz. Welcome, everyone. My name is Lorenz Kindling. I'm a senior BI consultant at Scalefree. Um, now working at Scalefree already for three years. Um, we're focused on data warehousing, data warehouse automation, and data world model. Um, I'm also a trainer in Agile data warehousing and yeah, my my core competencies um, are all around BI and data warehousing. Now Leonard okay. will go on and give you a little bit of an introduction or explanation why we made a, a change essentially to the inside Agile session and now change the name a little bit and also change the content to this inside modern data teams. But for that, I will hand over to Leonard. Yes, thank you. So um, before we start, um, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, um, please send them in the Q&A section uh, so we can answer them at the end of the webinar or after the webinar when the well, expert session, um, when the time is over. And um, yeah, we're going to record an answer question and we're going to send them with the following up email or uh, maybe we pick up some questions and we'll handle those later in the expert sessions. Okay, um, <clears throat> now as Lawrence already told you, we're going to start with why changing a running system. So why did we change from inside um, from our agile project management uh, expert session now to inside agile data teams. Um, we Build, we have built a little roadmap here where we are coming from and where we want to go. And this is what I want to talk about now. So um, what is Agile? This is where what uh, we started with. So um, what is there uh, after Scrum? So Agile is not only Scrum we, we discovered. So there's, for example, Discipline Agile, where Scafri also uh, had some trainings, offered some trainings uh, for. Um, so we explored this. This and Runs and I both became trainer for Discipline Agile, and we both adapted a lot of those concepts into our projects and uh, from our new learned projects. So, um, yeah, this is what we did last one and a half year, I think, Lawrence, pretty much. It's like one and a half year now. And um, yeah, over the last few months, we were thinking, okay, but is there something more we can discover, which is also belong to Agile, but maybe a bit more on the technical side, or how do you com combine those Agile methodologies from project management and, arch and and technical stuff like, for example, architecture, which is uh, where I want to go more into the uh, into depth. So what I discovered more, so architecture, solution architectures, and other new approaches, for example, uh, data mesh or data governance and governance in, in general, what uh, Lawrence is going for in the next few slides. Yes. So this is where we expanded our view and where we wanted to yeah, dive deeper into the topics. Yes. So um, essentially we wanted to broaden the topic a little bit yes. because there's so much more to talk about with, with Agile project management, but in general with data teams. Um, now these topics like data mesh, governance, um, data cataloging, all these topics got much more relevant is what we've seen as well. And we just want to integrate them into the session and not only focus on this agile, disciplined agile and scrum um, topics. Yeah, thank you, uh, great. And, um, but how does this affect our expert sessions in the future? So we stay agile. <laughs> so we still have a strong focus on agile project management and a way of working. So we still 
will try to combine those things like data mesh with for sure with uh, agile methodology and stuff like this so that we don't we don't leave it uh or well, this is not the last thing we will talk about but um we want to yeah like Lauren said we want to open up more topics so, um yeah as i said we're going to discover new topics uh, like data mesh and stuff like this and maybe we have a more focus on organization and stuff like this um, as I said, we are still open-minded, so if you have any ideas or if you want to talk about anything, um, feel free to, uh, sub, uh, to submit all your questions to us or send them in the Q&A at the, at the expert session so we can pick them up and talk about it later. And what we also want to do with this expert session, we want to invite some people to talk about maybe real life implementation of data mesh, for example, or uh, other topics um, where we are interested in or where we have uh, some interesting people we can invite. And uh, we are absolutely f also free to open up your, uh, to, to, to talk to you also. So if you have interesting topics and you want to share them with other people, um, feel free to write us and maybe we can do an expert session together. So this yes. is uh, what we want to do in the future. Um, also, what we're doing is that Lawrence and I will split up a bit the focus. So um, Lawrence is more focusing on topics like data governance, and, and I will uh, more have, have a stronger focus on, for example, data mesh and data fabrics and stuff like this. Um, this is where we start today also. Um, I give you a brief overview about what is data mesh and what will be our next topics in the upcoming sec uh, sessions about data mesh, and Lawrence will do the same with data governance in this expert session yes i think the the open-minded part is really important i mean all of you who are who are here today probably already know our question form we have it at the end of the webinar again you find it on on our website at scale free as well if you search for for our expert session there you can still submit questions and we still want to keep the focus on topics that really um, that you really struggle with or that you see in your projects uh, where you have questions too. So um, yeah, not that we um, don't want to, to take the questions anymore. Um, the completely opposite is the case. So if you have questions, if you have topics you want to talk about, um, please submit them um, on the question form. You will get the QR code at the end of the webinar um, again as well. A short overview of the topics and give you a little bit of a um, yeah, overview, what is data mesh, what is data governance, what are maybe areas that we want to talk about so you can get some inspiration maybe. Essentially, what do I want to cover with data governance? And data governance, see on the left, the uh, cycle about it. Essentially, it, it covers a, a lot of topics and it goes even broader than the, the typical agile data warehouse project. Um, or also, I think, broader than data because it it covers a lot of different areas of a company. First of all, you have the technology part for sure. You need to document and govern your technology. You need to work with people. You need to have people who are responsible and you will have processes, standards that you need to implement. And if you look in more broader categories, essentially you can split it up into two, five different categories. I think you could do even more, but I think these give a good general overview what we are talking about when we talk about this. Um, and first, the first category um, I want to talk about now is the ownership. So essentially ownership plays a huge part in data governance. Um, you know, people who are responsible for the data that you are working um, and that goes from the source system, but also to the reports. Um, so essentially you need to, need to have ownership um, assigned in 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 a working data governance framework. So um, yeah, you should have um, roles for data stewardship and management. People who manage this data, people who who take the responsibility, and are also there for questions. Um, and the same goes for the accountability in the data lifecycle management. So essentially, um, someone uh, um, the responsibility to life cycle of the data? Do I need data in the future? Do I have GDPR topics here? And do I still need this report? This is also um, a question that you can, can ask here. So in an effective data governance frame, framework, you need ownership. Um, then you will have the question of stability. Um, so 
essentially who is allowed to access my data. Um, and there you can split it up in, in, in more detailed stuff, right? And in, in the data warehouse, you typically have row level, level um, security, but also access level security and data governance. We are most of the time talking a little bit more high level. So who in general has access to, um, to the data, who can decide who gets access to a third. Um, the data should be easy accessible. So you need to have some tools how, how people can access your data. It could be dashboards, could be reports, could be also data catalog tool that you have where you can um, yeah look at column description, all this stuff, essentially you need to make your data accessible. Um, yes. One part there is also security for sure, data. Um, I talked about it just now shortly. So who is allowed to access this, access the data? Um, what is happening if we have data breaches? How can we maybe see um, accessing? Uh, I think this is something that doesn't happen enough. Normally in a database, you can always monitor and see which people are querying the data what are people doing with it, which um, tools are maybe getting data out of the out of the database it needs to be managed and monitored. Um, then you need to have some kind of encryption. You need to have access policies. Um, yeah, and in general, a monitoring framework for all of this. So security is, is one data governance, um, yeah, which is probably already more on the basic parts. So a lot of people um, think about sec security first when they start these data projects because it's just important. Um, but I think nowadays you need to look at data concept that covers your whole life cycle of data. But part. then you for sure have the data quality. So um, how how is the quality of your data? Uh, you want it to be accurate. You want it to be complete and consistent reports or dashboard dashboards or they look at, at you want to make them informed and right decisions so you need quality data um, you need to have some tests uh, established as well um, data validation processes um, cleaning maybe you need some um, this, these tests that are you will need to have some monitor uh, monitoring of of your data quality so all this plays a, a big part in, in data governance. Last but not least, uh, what we now more and more um, is, is the knowledge part. People want a better documentation of their data. Um, maybe sometimes companies even already build their old data warehouse and now they see how hard it is to uncover what's even happening there um, and what's happening with their data transformation. So you need to have some good documentation of your data sources, of, of definitions of columns, um, what does this column mean? What does uh, this data even mean? And how now, um, also you promote data literacy um, and understanding among users. So in the best case, your users, people that, that use your data or that um, use some data product, should have um, the option to go into some kind of data catalog, some tool, to read something, Confluence, some documentation tool to read some more details about your data. Um, yeah, it's essentially the last point, enabling data cataloging and metadata management for transparency. Um, I think a huge, huge pa a part that's happening more and more in the industry right now um, and that um, should get more focus as well. And this is essentially um, everything about get data governance. I know there are much more small detailed topics that you could talk about now, but this is just a broad overview. So you guys can get a feeling for what we want to cover in the next um, next months and years. Um, and maybe that you already can, can go a little bit into detailed questions if you have some. Um, yeah, essentially, what are we doing inside modern data teams? The session, um, the same as before, there that there didn't really change much. Every second Thursday of the month, we um, 
yeah, we want to discover key strategies for building effective, agile, and col collaborative modern data teams. And um, yeah, scan the QR code, go to the website, the link that you see there right now. And they can submit questions, read something about the, the session in general. And yeah, I hope that gave you a good overview. Um, thank you for joining. And are there any questions? I don't know. Let me have a look in the Q&A. Um, not today, but maybe if you have some, some questions in the future, just ask them by the link. Be great. Yes. No questions for today. Okay. But okay. yeah, feel free to put them in chat uh, on the Q&A. Um, thank you very much for joining. Thank you. I hope you got some some insights today, some overview of the the topics we want to cover. And have a great Thursday. And see you. See you. Bye-bye.